welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to show you all of my current favorite art supplies that I use most often and like the most. So let's get right into it. So what I'll start with is a pencil case. I don't typically use a pencil case when I'm at home, but this is usually something I use when I go out and about. So this would actually be considered my travel pencil case. What I use is the Delphonics brand pouch and it is Super sturdy, very durable, and can hold a lot of things despite its small size. I don't know if you can tell how small it is. I, I have kind of big hands, so it's hard to, to tell, but this is the size of my hand. I don't know. Yeah, really convenient size, very sturdy. The only two things that are in here right now are my travel sketchbook and my travel watercolor set. And then this little pin I got from Seabird. But yeah, this is my pouch that I use, my pouch of choice. Very good. I like it a lot. <laughs> Next, I'm going to go into graphite slash pencils slash charcoals. What I typically use the most for general sketching is this Pentel Twist Erase XP or this Graph Gear 1000, also by Pentel. This is actually 0.7 size and this is 0.5. One day I would like to get, this is actually, I'm not sure the softness of this lead, but this lead is HB. I'm thinking of getting a softer lead for it, but it works well for me right now. It's very useful for just general sketching when I just want a simple like pencil paper type of experience, nothing too fancy. So these are the ones I use the most often. And this one's nice because it comes in a few different colors. This twist erase one. So I use the eraser on here sometimes, but I typically use the separate eraser because I don't want to wear it out. For sketches that'll eventually be colored, or if I just want to sketch in color, what I typically use is either the Red Pilot Color Eno in size 0.7. This is a mechanical colored lead pencil. Or what I will also often use is the Prismacolor Color Race in the color Vermilion. You can tell this has seen a lot of use. I like this one a lot. I'm gonna have to get a new one of like just this color soon. <laughs> so those are the two that I use most often for my red sketches. I try to use this one very sparingly because the lead is so soft. I don't want to go through it too much. But yeah, that is what I use for my color sketches. For more in-depth pencil drawings or more variations of lead slash graphite drawings, I like this Faber-Castell set of sketching pencils in various lead softnesses. So like HB to 8B. Typically I'll use these in conjunction with these tortillions just to give a little bit of visual interest and smudge onto the drawings. These work well together. I have this mini pencil sharpener too that I, I use for it sometimes. Oh, so either for as far as pencil sharpeners, I have either this mini one or this one that I inherited from my dad who I think inherited it from his grandparents. But this, it is honestly the best pencil sharpener that I've ever had in my entire life. I'm so happy that he gave this to me. I'm so grateful because it's just served me well, like so, so well throughout like all my childhood and current years. This pencil sharpener just without fail sharpens every pencil to the perfect pointiness and never breaks any pencil. One of my treasures. As far as charcoal, I like sketching in charcoal when I want a little bit of a darker sketch. I don't know, just something a little different. I have these pencils and they are the Generals brand. I have three shades here and then, oh, I guess these are technically like chalk pastel pencils. Nice and convenient because they are in pencil form. <laughs> For erasers, I like to use these Tombow Mono erasers. These are my favorite. Moving on to colored pencils, my absolute favorites are these Prismacolor colored pencils. You have absolutely probably heard of them before. They're very common, very popular. I have the 72 set. It serves me very, very well. It's like just the right amount of range of colors that I need. What I use them for too, I, so I'm not really a fan personally of doing pieces just in colored pencils. So usually what I use my colored pencils for is in tandem with other art supplies, particularly watercolor or alcohol marker. I will use them for details over top and stuff to give finishing touches to drawings and and, like give them that extra little bit of texture. Absolutely love them. I also have these Prismacolor Color Race pencils. You saw one of them earlier. But these are the rest of the colors that I don't use as often. These are nice when I want to do sketching in color because the lead of these is a little bit harder so it comes off on the paper a little bit lighter in color so these are nice to sketch with. Next I'll move on to ink slash pens. So what I like to use as far as pens is I like the Muji ballpoint pens. This one's like almost out of ink. I've used up a ton of these before. These are nice for sketching. I also like these for just writing in general. It handles like an ink pen but it's a ballpoint. Like this is such 
such a good quality pen. I also have this random by itself Bic ballpoint pen. <laughs> I would love other colors, like I would love like a red version of this. This is just something I had randomly around the house for like the longest time. I'd love to get a black one and a red one because these are fun to sketch with. Sometimes I will sketch with these Pilot G2 pens. These are my all-time favorite, particularly the size 0.38 for like writing or everything I do. I've gone through so many of these. This is my all-time favorite pen of all time. <laughs> I don't commonly sketch with these because they smudge a lot. They're not really the most easy to handle sketching pens, but I like them for writing. So if I ever make little notes in my sketchbook or, you know, while I'm journaling, I will typically use these pens. No other pen has come close so far to this one. This is like my all-time favorite. Next I have these calligraphy pens, these Pombo Hudenosuke calligraphy pens. I forget which one's which, but one of them has like a firmer tip and one of them has a softer tip, and the softer tip one is good for line weight and variation in that, and then the other one's just a nice little thick marker. Again, these are ones I use commonly for journaling, but once in a while I'll use these in my sketchbook too if I don't feel like using a pencil. Next I have these Faber-Castell Artist Pit Pens slash Sakura Pigma Sensei pens. I gather them all here in one together because they look so similar to me but technically they're two different brands here. These are super fun and nice to sketch with. Line art too, like in my art I like a lot of thick line art so these are fun for me. My favorite sizes of the Pit Artist Pens are the F and the M size and my favorite size in the Sakura Pigma Sensei is the 0.6. Very good in quality, very matte, and I think they're waterproof too, I forget. But, um, oh yeah, they are. <laughs> they're waterproof too, so they're fun to use in tandem with water-based markers or with watercolor because they're not gonna bleed, so these are really nice. I like these a lot. Next I have the Sakura Pigma Microns. I don't use these that often. I want to use them more though because they are a super good quality pen. <laughs> I have them in black of all different sizes, and then I have 0 0.05, I have sepia. <laughs> That's the only other color I have. These are very nice. I don't use them very often, but they're nice to have. I'm actually very precious with these because the pen tips of these seem so, like, delicate, so I try not to use them, like, that often because I've noticed they can wear down pretty easily, so I try to use them very sparingly because they're very nice pens. Moving on, we have Stabilo Fine Liners. I will most often use these for journaling, but what once in a while I'll also use them as colored line art in my sketchbooks too, so definitely worth a mention. They're very nice fine liners. I also have Stedler fine liners, but I actually prefer the Stabilo. For some reason I just think these give a better line quality and they last a little bit longer in my opinion. I don't know, I feel like I've had too many of these pens wear down on me very easily, so or maybe I just, I don't know, use them a lot. But in general I typically prefer these. I think I like, it's also a wider range of colors, so <laughs> overall I prefer the Stabilo pens. For these white ink pens I have the jelly roll. These are like such a hit or miss for me. I feel like the 0.5 never works for me, so typically I'm using the 10 or the 8 size for my white marks, but even then like they don't always like work that well all of the time, so I mean I'll use these sometimes, but most often when I want to put white highlight or something on my art, typically I'm gonna reach for the Posca paint pen or I'll even take a little paintbrush and use acrylic white paint sometimes too, because these ones can like bleed easily into the color and like not give you a, a pure opaque white. That's just my experience. I feel like some people love them and rave about them. I'm like lukewarm about them. I also have this one that I wasn't even going to mention because like I hardly ever use this one at all. I feel like I remember this one working okay at some point. I like, I don't know, I haven't used it in a long time, but I don't remember it working that well. And then to finish up the ink slash pen category, I will finish up with ink. <laughs> These are the Dr. PH Martins brand ink. I have the matte black and iridescent gold, and I got these a few years back for Inktober. Oh, Inktober, I have not that is, a, that is a challenge I cannot do. <laughs> but around October I do like to practice with ink, and I actually really like working with ink I found. It handles a lot like watercolor. I have to be really really careful with it because it's the kind of medium that doesn't wash out like watercolor, but you know as long as you're super careful with it, it is a very fun medium to work with. Moving on to markers. So first I will talk about water-based markers that I like. So my favorite water-based markers are the Tombow ABT markers. These are really nice because they are dual size so they have the fine point side and the brush side. So I like to use them for sketching and lining and also coloring things in. I really like these a lot. They're a lot of fun to work with and the color quality is very good. This next tool I also typically mostly just use for journaling, but once in a while I'll use them in my sketchbook to like color with or line with. Similar to the Tombow ABT markers, these Zebra Mild Liners have two points, so you can do it like a fine point tip or use a highlighter side. I 
don't like to use these that much in my sketchbook because I prefer to like save the ink for when I'm using them in my planner or journal. It's just another thing I might use. Regarding alcohol markers, my all-time favorites recently are the Ohuhu markers. I just really love the quality of these markers. I think they are on par with Copic, if not probably even better, because I prefer like vibrant bold colors and I feel like the colors of the Ohuhu is generally more vibrant than Copic. And Ohuhu is great because not only do they, they have refills now for their markers, but also you can choose the type of brush tips that you can have on either side. So I, I chose like brush and fine tip for mine versus the chisel tip. Like I don't like chisel tips. So I opted not to get that. And you can like get a lot of colors all at once. I liked the Copic when I was using Copic, but I ended up just really preferring Ohuhu over Copic. My last type of markers I have are paint markers and I have these Posca pens. These are the only paint markers I have. <laughs> I would love to try like different brands of paint markers, but like this is the only one I have for now. I really like these. <laughs> Posca paint pens are a lot of fun to use. They're kind of similar to colored pencils in that like it's hard for me to use them just by themselves, but when I use them in conjunction with other art supplies, they give a really nice effect and they are a lot of fun to use. <laughs> they add a lot to a piece in my opinion. The white one is good for a lot of highlights too. I got all these in a pack, like a single pack, but then I bought this purple and pink one separately. I would love to get more colors of these, but these are like so crazy expensive, so these ones work just fine for me for now. Okay, moving on to watercolor. This one's really exciting because I have been using a lot of watercolor recently. You've probably seen this before or heard me talk about it before, but this is my favorite watercolor palette. It's the Mei Leung Pretty Excellent palette, and I just got it from Amazon. I like just heard about it from a random Tumblr post back in the day listing affordable art supplies that you could get on Amazon and I just happened to be curious about this one because I think at the time I wasn't really using watercolor that much. You can see it's like very well used and well loved. Long story short, I ended up just falling in love with this palette. I love how bold and vibrant the colors are. I'm just super obsessed with this palette. It's like such a good range of colors and I feel like watercolor palettes like this work best with these types of pens. I had more of these, I just don't know where they are. I typically only use this size anyway, like this is the one I'm most often using. This is really nice when you don't feel like grabbing a typical brush and filling up water. This is less cleanup and less prep involved, but these Pentel water-based brushes are another super favorite of mine. This is just like, this is my combo. When you see things colored in in my sketchbook, it's most likely with this combo. I also have these Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors. I don't use these as often because like I said, there's a lot more prep involved with using these. You have to get like a palette and jar of water and stuff. But yeah, these are really nice too in my experience. I just don't really use them as often. Traditional brushes that I have that I like, I'm very, very like precious with them. Typically Princeton brand or Simply Simmons brand. But yeah, these are the brushes that I use when I use brushes. It's an alternative. So moving on to gouache, I want to use gouache way more often because I love the way gouache looks. I have this Kimi gouache set that I really love. I think it is an excellent gouache set. Mine's just like, okay, so let me see what mine looks like because it's probably not in super good shape. It's probably all dried up. But the nice thing about these is they like re-wet really well. Yep, definitely is in dire need of being like re-moistened. I really like Kimi gouache. It handles really well and the colors are super pleasing. But yeah, just to don't look at my Himi gouache. It's, uh, it's in bad state right now. I also have Arteza gouache. I haven't used this a ton because, <laughs> again, I feel like lately I've only been using watercolor, but I definitely want to get back into using gouache. And I like this set too because, similar to the Ohuhu, this was like relatively affordable and this came with like, there's like, what, like 12 more trays in there? <laughs> there are so many colors in here. And I'm really, honestly, I'm not really one that likes to mix my own colors. So this is perfect for me, like just having a wide range already there. And don't ask me what happened. To, I, I don't know what's going on with this one. They're like all in pristine condition and this one just looks terrible. <laughs> but yeah, I also like the Arteza gouache. I feel like I'm not experienced enough of a gouache user to like be super critical about them. Like, I don't know, they just, they work good for me. They put color on the paper and that's what I need them for. <laughs> I want to incorporate more gouache in my pieces because I love the way gouache looks. So definitely want to get more use out of these. For acrylic paint, my favorite brand is, I like these ones. These are like kind of the same brand, but more like cheaper version. And I liked getting basics in these, like having a lot of these. But this is a brand that I have used since high school, like in all of my high school art classes. I'm just so used to using the Liquitex brand of acrylic. So after high school, I ended up buying the same ones because I was so used to using them. They might be on the slightly pricier side, but again, since I had used them for like years all through high school, I just felt comfortable enough getting my own set. And I like how they have like a more affordable, like version of the colors too. So I think if I were to get more colors, I don't know, I'd probably like reach for like this version of the brand more likely, but I don't use a lot of acrylic in my sketchbooks. When I paint acrylic, it's usually on a canvas. Like I mentioned earlier too, I liked 
to do like a tiny bit of acrylic on like a very thin paintbrush if I want to do like a highlight or something because in my experience the opaque white pens aren't as opaque as they claim to be so usually I'll just go for this stuff. Lastly, I wanted to talk about the type of sketchbooks that I prefer the most. So when I am looking for a sketchbook, so typically I'm looking for something that is perfect bound, not too many pages, because I feel like I work in them slow slowly anyway, so having like a huge book will just like slow me down even more and that just, that doesn't work that well for me. <laughs> I like being able to like complete my books in a reasonable amount of time. And I, I don't like spiral bound, <laughs> I've mentioned that before. I prefer perfect bound books because I like doing spreads all across. I don't like them to be too like large in size because if there's too much space on the page. I don't know, I feel like I get intimidated really easily because I like to fill up my pages and try to like eliminate all the white space as much as possible. So if there's just like a lot a lot of white space I feel like that would like intimidate me and it doesn't really work that well for me. I like both off-white and the bright white but I think I prefer for a little bit the bright white because I think colors pop more on bright white but off-white is nice too it's easier on the eyes. I like something that has like a closable strap so something that I can close because I feel like that protects the book more and protects the pages more. Also prefer hardcover over softcover because again I feel like it's more durable. I prefer like a black sketchbook cover because I like putting stickers on my sketchbooks and I feel like that looks the best like I just when I think of a sketchbook I just think of a black book with stickers on it I don't know but yeah, that's what I look for in a sketchbook. So I gathered a few of my top favorite sketchbooks that I've used in the past. Some of my top favorites that I've used are this book, my sketchbook five books. This is a Strathmore mixed media hardcover. I really love this because it's like not that long of a book. The Strathmore mixed media paper is really nice. I have the soft cover version too, but this hardcover version is really nice because it just feels more durable to me. It's also smaller. I, I don't know how I feel about the square edges too. Sometimes I feel like I prefer round, but I'm not really sure. But also like it doesn't closed too so it checks off most of the boxes but not like every single one and also has bright white paper like I feel like the colors show up really well in this book in my opinion this was one of my favorite books to work in another one this is part of my unfinished sketchbook series but this is the Moss Area Mixed Media yeah it's just super nice closable and the cover is really nice too because like you can switch it out the book itself is actually spiral bound but I actually don't mind it too much because the actual quality of the book is just like so nice that I, I really don't care like what binding it is this is a really really nice quality book. This is an unfinished book that I can't wait to get back to because it's like that good. And the sketchbook that I am currently in is one of my favorites. This is the Ohuhu Mixed Media. I've really been enjoying working in this so far. It checks off a lot of the requirements that I look for. I'll be so sad when it's over because this is probably one of my favorite books I've ever worked in. Huge recommendation if you have the same preferences as me. Last, before I forget, I do want to mention the last medium that I use, which is ironically the medium that I use the most often. <laughs> so it is digital. I have my iPad. It's a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It is a very good, very solid machine and it has my all-time favorite digital drawing program, which is Procreate. So that is what I use for my digital art. Ever since I switched to using an iPad and Procreate, I feel like my art improved a lot, so that's like a huge favorite of mine. And then when I'm drawing digitally, I will use this hand protector thing, just because sometimes when I watch other people draw, it like baffles me that they don't need to like rest their hand on, the, but maybe, I don't know, my hand or my arm gets tired, I have no idea. But like I physically cannot, I can't draw with my hand in the air, I need my hand like resting. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like really hard for me to draw with my hand resting in the air, and I've noticed that the palm rejection on the iPad, it's all right, but with the amount that I, like, normal person will probably be fine but the amount that I need to put my hand on it doesn't really work that well so I need an additional sort of barrier between me and the screen in order for it to like work really well and also I don't like when my screen is smudged so that protects it from that too and then yeah for that same reason I have this little cleaner that I can use to clean off the screen often because again I don't like smudges so yeah that is my digital art supplies all right so that is just about all of my it's not all of my art supplies that I have but it is pretty much a good representation of my favorite art supplies and the art supplies that I use the most often. Lastly, what I'm going to do, okay, we're going to circle back to my travel pouch. Lastly, what I figured I would do is show you my travel essentials. So of all of these art supplies, what I would choose to bring with me if I were going out and about. So let me take this out and just show you. So this is a Peter Popper Press brand sketchbook and it is what I use for my travel sketchbook. It fits perfectly in here, so it is good. This, I have no idea what brand watercolors these are, so I got these both at a local bookstore and I don't remember this is probably like an off brand of some kind I don't know but it doesn't have the brand written anywhere on here but it's kind of like a travel watercolor set I don't love the colors in here but it works <laughs> and oh yeah so it came with its own little water brush those are the first couple things that I would put
put in my travel case. The next thing I would choose to include is my red pilot color Eno for colored sketching. Next I would include my Faber-Castell sketching pencils, along with a mini Tortillion and mini sharpener, and Tombow Mono Eraser. Oh, there's something else in here. Oh, I forgot I had this in here. I also have these little sticky notes. These are actually very important. I like sticky notes to cover up mistakes. I'll draw on top of whatever I just did. For regular gray sketching, I would include my Pentel Twist Erase mechanical pencil. I would include a couple of color erase pencils, including my favorite one, Vermilion. I would also include this whiteout for the mistakes that I'm inevitably going to make. Actually, it doesn't fit that well, so no, I would not, I would not include whiteout. Next, I would choose these mild liner pens that I don't use that often. They're just like kind of extra colors that I hardly use that often, so I don't mind using them up. So I would take those with me for just little bits of marker-based color. And the last thing I would take with me are these Faber-Castell one and the Sakura Pigma Sensei artist pen in my favorite sizes to work with. And that would be the typical representation of what I would take with me. I would probably opt not to use these outside pockets typically, just because if I'm taking it out and about, I don't want anything to fall out. So everything I'm going to try to like put inside. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the kinds of art supplies that I prefer the most and like using the most. If this gave you any inspiration or if you saw anything interesting, feel free to also try the same art supplies. I hope this was interesting. I hope this was fun watching. Sorry if it was a little chaotic. I'm not good at showcasing things. I'm just like, here's this. Okay. Now here's this. Okay. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you have a nice rest of your March. It's warming up, so spring's coming. That's really exciting. See you in my next video. Bye!